Okay, we're working now. Okay, good. Sorry for that. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a brand new commissioner tonight. So I think our next order of business is to have him sworn in and take the oath of office to be our newest commissioner. And repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of California. The Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution. That I will take this obligation freely. Take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Charge the duties. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. Okay. Thank you and welcome to the commission. Could we have the roll call now, please? Commissioner Condit? Here. Commissioner Del Nero? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Absent. Commissioner Otero? Here. Chairperson Catchell? Here. Next item on the agenda is the election of a new chairperson and vice chairperson. I'll make a nomination. I'll second that nomination. Want the job? I accept. Okay. Let's take a vote on that, please. Commissioner Condit? Aye. Commissioner Del Nero? Aye. Commissioner Otero? Aye. Chairperson Catchell? Aye. Motion carries 4 0 with one absent. I guess I'll do my last act and call for the vote for for the vice chairperson for the for the next year. I'll make I'll make a nominate, Mr. Catchell. I'll second that motion. Motion and second. All in favor, please call the roll, please. Commissioner Condit. Aye. Commissioner Del Nero. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. I'm sorry, absent. Commissioner Otero. Aye. Chairperson Catchell? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 with one absent. Thank you. And the rest of the meeting will now be run by our new chairperson. A conflict of interest? Nothing. Citizens, citizen communications to the commission on matters not included on the agenda. Well, the Planning Commission welcomes and encourages participation in Planning Commission meetings. Adopted rules allow no more than five minutes. Resolution number 2012-132 for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the Planning Commission from taking action on any matter which is not on the post agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the Planning Commission. Citizens are entitled to address the Planning Commission on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. Consent calendar, all matters listed on. Is there any citizen communications? Consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by one motion. 
if discussion is required, that particular item will be removed from the consent calendar and will be considered separately. There's one item, clerk's report of posting the agenda for the regular meeting of the Planning Commission of January 16th, 2024 was posted on January 11th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second it. Can I get the roll call, please? Commissioner Condit? Aye. Commissioner Del Nero? Aye. Commissioner Catchell? Aye. Chairperson Otero? Aye. Motion carries 4 0 with one absent. Moving on to public hearings. Public hearings are generally required by regulation where public comments go into the public record and the hearing is governed by rules concerning who speaks when and for how long and it's overseen by a hearing official. Uh, second item, 23-26, a conditional use permit to construct a 92,248 square foot self-storage facility. This proposal also includes a 1,908 square foot two-story manager's living quarters with a 616 square foot two-car garage. The facility will employ two to three employees. The office hours are expected to be 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays. Gate access is expected to be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Sunday. This facility will be served by an on-site stormwater basin. The CEQA status is exempt per section 15332 um, in field development. And our required action is to adopt PC resolution number 24-01. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. This presentation is for the city, the series self-storage application number 23-26, conditional use permit. Twenty three dash twenty six conditional use permit is construct to construct a ninety two thousand two hundred forty eight square foot self storage facility. This proposal includes a nineteen hundred and eight square foot two story manager's living quarters, um, with a six hundred sixteen square foot two car garage. The facility will employ two to three employees. The office hours are expected to be nine a.m. to six p.m. Monday through Saturday, and nine a.m. to five p.m. Sunday. A access will be expected to be. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. This project site is located on the east side of Mitchell Road, approximately 570 feet south of Roding Road. This is the aerial vicinity map showing the project area. The project site is zoned highway commercial. The project site has a general plan designation of highway commercial. The properties to the north are zoned highway commercial with residential uses. The property to the south is regional commercial with residential uses. To the east is highway commercial with commercial development. Uh, and the canal is along the east side of the property there. And to the west is highway commercial vacant land and then commercial development. This is the site plan that shows the proposed facility. Um, the, the front there along Mitchell Road, you'll see the, the retention basin along with the office and the manager's quarters um, who will be living on site to, to maintain the facility. Um, and then the 9,200, sorry, 92,248 square foot storage facility will be behind the main building. This is a photo of another facility. This, this particular facility has a unique ramp design, which our applicant is here to go into a better detail. It's really unique, so I wanted to point out that um, 
the way it's it's designed is to allow two stories of storage units so everything is ground level so there's no elevator or anything and it also provides more privacy to the surrounding neighbors and for the the occupants of the facility so everywhere a facility storage unit is facing the outside property line is blocked by a CMU wall that's going to be constructed so there's no People can't spy on each other kind of thing. So I think it's a really good design and our applicant will share more on it. This is the project site from Mitchell Road. It is currently an undeveloped property. Staff recommends to make the determination that this project is exempt from environmental review pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15332 in field development projects and approve 23-26 conditional use permit subject to the findings and conditions contained in the attached draft resolution PC 23-28. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission? You, I so I just want to ask staff, uh, how many storage facilities are currently in the city limits? You guys have that number? Um, I would venture to guess three or four storage facilities. Three or four. There's one on uh, Herndon. There's at least one on Hatch east of Mitchell. Um, those are the two that stand out to me. Um, they're, 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 oh, that's, yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Um, another one that the city uh, planning commission approved a couple of years ago um, was for the old um, uh, the old Kmart building. Okay. Um, and with this uh, presentation, was a traffic study done on for Mitchell Road? No, it is anticipated that the, the volume of traffic traffic for this is not seed any impacts. It'll be very minimal. And my last question, were the residents in the surrounding areas notified of this meeting? Yes, a notification was sent out for a three hundred foot radius to all the property owners regarding this meeting. So property owners is different than renter who's living in the, in this neighborhood. So we're required to send out notice to the property owners um, within 300 feet. And um, that's been our practice. Okay. Is that the city's practice or is, the, is that a guideline that we have to? Both. Both. Okay. I'm not sure I understand exactly how the dual level ramp works. So I'm looking forward to hearing that from the applicant because yes, they came prepared. <laughs> I didn't didn't make any sense just listening to you. It's but really I'm... neat. It took me a while to understand. Okay. Thanks. So now we'll open it for public comment. Hi there, my name is Ian Lopak. I'm the applicant on this project. Thank you everyone for um, allowing us this opportunity to present today. Here with my associate, John as well, who can speak to the two-story design. I wanted just to take a moment to introduce ourselves. I work at a company called Smart Self Storage. We've been building these facilities since 1973. We currently own 13 throughout California. And um, our founder, or one of our founders, is actually my dad. He's 79 years old, but still comes in to the office every day, seven days a week, pretty much. And we take great pride in building local quality neighborhood self-storage facilities. And we work with uh, local, um, local subcontractors, local engineers, including uh, Ryan, for example, who's our civil engineer here, um, uh, who's uh, here today to answer any questions that might come up from a civil engineering perspective. But one of the things I wanted to point out with our facility and our company is we are very picky in particular our development strategy and we like to pinpoint the perfect uh, product market fit. And we 
really believe in this particular facility because we opened one actually in Turlock in September of um, 2022 on Diane Drive in Fulkirk. It's um, not far from the um, Dodge Ram uh, Chrysler Jeep dealership. And just in um, just about in over a year, it's already uh, been met with so much product acceptance because the facility is almost now nearly full. And what we try to build at Smart Self Storage is a really premium quality uh, self-storage facility. So oftentimes it's very different from what many people believe out there is kind of your characteristic self-storage you might have seen on television. We try to have the best quality appearance for the local community. For example, we hired Tom Holloway from KLA Landscaping. He's out of Sonora, which isn't too far from here. He actually designs the landscaping for hotels, including hotels in Las Vegas, because Christopher, as we worked um, with the city here to design this facility, told me up front, Ian, you need to make the landscaping and the facade of this facility the best looking facility your company has ever designed. And so we really put um, Tom and our architectural firm up to that um, task with this particular facility. Um, I could spend a lot of time going through all of the particular features of the facility, but the uh, key that I really want to highlight is that we're not in this uh, for the short term. We're a long-term build, hold, and operate um, type of business. We're not looking to sell the facility or make a quick dollar. We want to uh, really invest in the city of Ceres in hiring local employees, in hiring local subcontractors, and providing value to the local citizens and the local businesses of this community, which our research has shown and our um, facility just not too far from here in Turlock has already surfaced that there's a real demand uh, for this type of product. And so we really, again, appreciate this opportunity. And one of the things that we have learned over the course of our uh, decades of operation is that the customer is everything. And so this facility will look a little different probably than a facility you've seen before because of the two level design. And this is a design actually that my business associate John has invented um, with another facility that we built um, in Chino, California. And so I was hoping um, Teddy, if it's okay, I could call uh, John up to just briefly go over our, our two-story design. Hi. Um, so just to give you the quick summary on the two-level uh, design, basically what it allows for, because one thing that we discovered in doing our storage is that everybody hates is having to go into an elevator or walk upstairs doing couches, furniture, anything big. Um, and so we came up with this two-story design that allows you to basically put a ramp through the center of your two buildings, allowing multiple levels while still having drive-ups, which are greatly favored over having to go down a hallway with anything. Um, and so this doubles also because with the earthen ramp that basically divides your two buildings, uh, you also get a bit of insulation that also brings you a little bit of a benefit to your uh, units right next to the ramp as well. Um, if there's any further question in regards to exactly how the ramp functions, I'll be able to help you a little bit better. That as well, if it's okay with the two -story. One of the great benefits is it enhances privacy, not only for the customer, but also for the surrounding neighbors as well, because the units that are upstairs, they're actually accessed from a ramp that just goes through the middle of the two buildings. And so when you've driven your vehicle up the ramp, you have the benefit of those drive ups up there, which is so convenient for the customer, but also no kind of eyes are really peering in, but also uh, we already limit our business hours because one thing that you might find different with our company is we don't operate these facilities 24 seven in our industry. Sometimes it gets a bad reputation because people might be coming in the middle of the night and that's why we restrict our, our gate access hours. But even so during the day, neighbors don't wanna be seeing any kind of activity and they don't wanna see people coming in and out of units. And that's why with the way that uh, John built this facility was very mindful of ensuring the privacy um, of those those around in the community. Okay. 
I think I get it. Other public comments? Being equally serious. This is past how soon before the ground is broken. And uh, again, question that Gary cut it that was the traffic study. How soon would that go into place? I'm sorry, sir. Were you asking how soon um, this storage facility will be built? My understanding? Breaking ground? On the traffic study. I guess uh, I can comment on both those particular topics and jump, feel free to jump in as well. From a traffic standpoint, we've typically found that self storage is a lower impact um, business. And that's why when I was searching all throughout um, this area, of Central Valley, like where could our next facility be? Where would be the perfect product market fit? We really felt that this was a great location because we're already on a busy street. Um, which is great because it offers convenience to the customer, but also being mid-block on a busy street, we certainly didn't want to create unnecessary traffic or um, create a, ro a roadblock. And what's great about self-storage is when it comes to traffic, it's a very low, um, low traffic uh, use. In fact, uh, studies have been done in the past where it's really low on the list. I think there, there are certain type of uses even lower in traffic, such as a cemetery, for example, but it's down there on the list where it's a very low traffic um, uh, use. Then I guess in terms of a construction timeline, our hope is that if um, the council members decide to approve our project, um, as I had mentioned, we're a, uh, you know, a, a long-term build, operate, hold forever type developer. So this would be a project we'd be hoping to, to build ourselves and, um, and manage. Of course, we would work with the uh, planning department. My understanding is there's certain rules about grading when in the winter months and there's rainwater and things like that. So we would have to, to work within those type of guidelines. But of course, our goal would be to work, work with the city and understand a timeline that would make sense. But we'd certainly hope to proceed forward construct the project and uh, being a, a company that's been around since 1973 with a, uh, a portfolio of, of, of 13 facilities now we're in a solid financial place as well where we have what it takes to get the project done because I know no one in this city wants to see something half constructed or someone who has trouble obtaining financing someone who has trouble getting from point A to point B we, we have the strength uh, within our operation to start the project get it completed and open open for business, of course, with a timeline that, that would uh, make sense with the city as well. Thank you. Yes. Real quick, I have a question, Doug Dunford, City Man. Looking at the public safety standpoint, uh, what's the turning radius? How big a fire truck can get in here and make it? How big of a fire truck can go in there and make a U-turn? How big a pumper? Um, just as a frame of reference, at our Chino facility, we have we design all for standard fire trucks that are the not necessarily ladder trucks, but your standard engine, full engine turn through these. Um, in all of our plans, we always include the turn radiuses to allow for that. Make sure that we're fully capable of being covered should anything happen. Granted, this is a these buildings are done fully concrete and metal, so the risk of fires going through them is very minimal. But obviously, stuff still happens. Fire in Texas that hits the building, but that had appellants in it. So obviously, you can't account. You do account for uh, fire truck turn radius. Noting on the fire side of things, we worked with the fire department in plans that uh, Teddy shared today. And in fact, the facility will be individually uh, sprinklered. So there'll be the fire sprinklers um, at the facility in each of the units. Thank you. Back to the commission. 
So this this looks like a good infield type project. If you look at the, it's there and just the space and it looks like it fits in there. Like a glove or fair with So yeah, I think it's a good location as well. Um, it's not going to add much revenue to the city from what I understand, but also there won't be a lot of calls for service when it comes to the fire and police either. Might be worth pointing out as well that the project would have been referred out so other agencies would have had an opportunity to come including fire and police and anybody else that would interest. So they would have seen this project before tonight. And as far as traffic, uh, this is an infill project and is exempt under the California Environmental Quality Act, commonly called CEQA. And what that means is that the traffic impact for commercial development, which is the zoning along that road uh, was indicated, was, excuse me, was studied and any mitigations in, indicated uh, as a part of the study for that planning process, which happened years ago when the zoning was first put into place. In other words, the traffic impacts have already been addressed and analyzed. And this is, as the applicant indicated, one of the lower traffic generators as to what could go in there. So in that sense, uh, it won't be a major impact on traffic and any impacts would have been addressed. Well, with that, are you ready for a motion? Yep, can I get a motion? Yeah, I'll make one. Um, move that we make determination to project exempt from the environmental review pursuant to sequence guidelines section 15332 and approve 23-26 CUP conditional use permit subject to the findings conditions contained in the attached draft resolution PC 24-01. I'll, I'll second that motion. Can I get a roll call? Commissioner Condit? Nay. Commissioner Del Nero? Yes. Vice Chair Catchell? Yes. Chairperson Otero? Yes. Motion carries three, one no, one absent. Welcome to series. The third item, uh, we have a final map approval for PPM 22-17, an amendment of prior conditions of approval, subdivision of a 0.44 acre site into two residential zoned parcels located at 3605 9th Street, a CEQA status exempt per section 153.15, minor land divisions, required action adult PC resolution 24-02. The staff report, please. Yes. <clears throat> this project actually came to the Planning Commission in November of 2022 as a tentative parcel map. At the time, the Planning Commission approved the project, um, including conditions of approval. Um, the Municipal Code of Series requires that final map approval, even for something small like this, a two lot subdivision, has to go back to Planning Commission for approval. So that's one reason that this is coming back to the Planning Commission, even though it's already been reviewed and approved by the Planning Commission. Um, the other reason for bringing this to the Planning Commission is to make one change to the list of conditions of approval. Um, the condition that we're talking about is C6. It's in the Engineering and Public Works section. And it states that prior to or concurrent with the filing of the final map, this subdivision shall become a part of the 1972 Lighting and Landscape Maintenance District. This requirement's obsolete um, and a community facilities district would benefit the city much, much better than a, a landscape and lighting district. <clears throat> we have, for example, a community facilities district number three, which covers services such as police, fire, ambulance, parks, landscaping, and maintenance of the right of ways. Therefore, this, pro this project would be better suited to be in a community facilities district than um, an obsolete um, lighting and landscape maintenance district. So the proposal is to change that um, condition of approval that I've read to read as follows. Prior to the issuance of any temporary or certificate, final certificate of occupancy for any structure at the subject property, the applicant shall do one of the following. Number one, 
annex the prop the project into community facilities district number three or number two provide for and fund ongoing public services equivalent to those provided for within community facilities district number three the reason it's worded this way is that you can't force a person to vote a certain way and when they're annexing into a community facilities district they need to accept that and vote themselves into it um, there's only one property owner i've talked with the the um the project developer and they've agreed to enter into the community facilities district um, so the the funding for that uh, service to annex into the community facilities district will be borne by the developer which is the point of this um, so staff would recommend approval of the final map and approval of an amendment to the prior conditions of approval as described in the uh, attached draft resolution We're bringing it back to the commission. Are there any questions or comments? So at this time, we'll open it for public comment. Bringing it back to the commission. Any comments? No, we've never had one of these before, so it's a little unusual. We had the map itself, obviously, as you said, a little over a year ago, but it's the first time we've had a final map come. Will we be seeing more final maps coming before us? Seems more administrative. Talking, talking with our city attorney's office, it, it seems that we may want to uh, amend our municipal code, but it will require some meetings with planning commission and or uh, the at least the city council at the minimum, um, if not also the planning commission, to amend that part of the code for streamlining purposes because for something like this, a, a two-lot subdivision um, could be more easily handled and streamlined if it were um, approved through the engineering and, and planning staff yeah. in our office after the planning commission approves the tentative map. So the tentative map gets all the bones of the project on paper. And if there needs to be any very small, slight tweaks or changes, as happens um, when things become clearer and a more uh, descriptive and detailed plan is, is put forth, then we can make those changes um, administratively. That rarely happens. Thank you. Can I get a roll call? Oh, I'm sorry. Can I get a motion, please? I'll make a motion that we approve the final map and move approval of a, amendment to the, to the, I'll put my glasses on, I apologize. Approval of the amendment to the prior condition of approval as described in draft resolution PC 24 02. I'll second that. Can I get a roll call? Commissioner Condit? Aye. Commissioner Del Nero? Aye. Vice Chair Catchell? Aye. Chairperson Otero? Aye. Motion carries four with one absent or zero with one absent. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the fourth item, conditional use permit to relocate a house from 2761 6th Street to 3004 5th Street, a CEQA status exempt per section 15332, Infill development required action adopt PC resolution number 24 03. Can I get a staff report, please? Uh, yes, thank you. In August of 2022, the Siri City Council entered into an agreement with Shane Parson, who is here tonight, um, to do a land swap. So the city owned a house, um, a property with a house on Fifth Street, and Shane Parson owned a house. Uh, property with a house on um, 6th Street and um, North Street. And that property is the, on the same block as the Whitmore Mansion. So since the city has done this exchange, uh, Shane Parson would like to move or relocate that house to a different property that he owns on uh, Lawrence and 5th Street, which is the current location of the series Community Garden. Um, so the plan uh, would be to move that community garden to um, the same block as the Whitmore Mansion, but on the other side of it, Magnolia and 6th Street. Um, and 
So the, the series uh, Garden Club is aware, and it, this is this is just kind of a shuffling around of lands. But uh, in essence, we have to come to the Planning Commission because uh, it says in the municipal code that all structure relocations must be approved uh, by the Planning Commission. So I think this would be more important if um, I mean, maybe maybe I shouldn't say, but the importance of basically um, it's a house. So normally when you build a house, you only need a building permit. Um, you wouldn't come to the planning commission. But if this were, for example, a store and it were somehow being relocated to a different site, then maybe it would be something that the planning commission would look at uh, more importantly, because when a new store comes to town um, for site plan approval purposes, at least the planning commission is involved. Thank you. Does the commissioners have any questions? I don't ever remember one in the last twenty years, to be honest. We're very rare. Very rare. That's what I was. That's what I was seeing, thinking, and saying. Yeah, this is our second item in a row we've never had before. Yeah, there we go. Just to get you started on an easy agenda. Yes. All right. So we'll open up for public comment. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to bring it back to the commission. Motion to approve. And I'll second that motion. Can I get a roll call, please? Commissioner Condit. Aye. Commissioner Del Nero. Aye. Vice Chair Catchell. Aye. Chairperson Otero. Aye. Motion carries 4 0 with one absent. Moving along, looks like there is not any new business. Uh, public meetings. Public meetings are generally not required by regulation, involve an open, informal discussion between interested parties run by a moderator where comments may or may not be placed in the public record. There is not any. There is not any unfinished business. Matters initiated by Planning Commission and staff, none. Does the commission have anything to report? I just have a question. We have a meeting coming up with the city council. Is there an agenda for that meeting? In other words, what are we going to be talking about? Yeah, we'll we'll be sharing that um, soon here. I'm working with the city manager on that. Okay. The agenda will actually be posted tomorrow morning. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. So when we post that, we'll also send an email out to both city council and the planning commissioners. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to my colleagues up here for entrusting me with this responsibility to start leading these meetings. Um, anybody else have anything? The attorney? Or city staff, is there anything to report? Nothing to report. Any decision of the Planning Commission can be appealed to the City Council. Such an appeal of a Planning Commission action from this meeting must be filed by 5 p.m. Jan January 26, 2024. Any person who challenges any of the following actions in court may be limited to raising only those issues that they or someone else raised at the public hearing or in written correspondence delivered to the City of Series at or prior to the public hearing. The appeal must be filed in writing with a $630 filing fee. The meeting is adjourned. Next regularly scheduled planning commission meeting will be held on Monday, February 5th, 2024.